stage is set for the best in college lacrosse. It's a look at greatness right there. Years of dedication, hard work. Yeah, yeah, we've heard that before. This weekend is really about the jaw-dropping action. The biggest stars. This is what 6'5", 240 looks like. And the big-time plays. The big-time players. Wow! Oh, 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 oh. Matt Lambo. There's larger-than-life personalities. No, no. It's about stuffing those big-time players and silencing their larger-than-life personalities. Denied by Gettleman. And it's where we blaze trails. He sees through a defense as well as any attack from this decade. Going where they've never been before. The Scarlet Knights in those semifinals for the first time. Every loose ball means everything. Every face off, every shot, every ball. It's where champions are crowned. It's the past, the present, and the future. The big red. It's a championship weekend. The Tigers out of the gates like they missed breakfast. This is championship weekend. It's semifinal number two. Maryland marches into championship weekend with its eyes on history. Two wins away from going down as one of the greatest teams of all time. The Princeton Tigers. Look to be what Douglas was to Tyson, what the Giants were to the Patriots, what upset was to Man of War. The winner of this game will take on Cornell, a winner earlier today against Rutgers. Monday, the national championship at 1 p.m. on ESPN. Anish Roth, Clint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra will join us in just a minute. We're watching one of the most dominant teams we have seen in the history of college lacrosse, the Maryland Terrapins. They are two wins away from going down as a team that we will talk about forever. Jaw-dropping this year. When they burst on the scene in February, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. They've maintained that and even stepped it up. They are, like, in rare air here. We're talking teams, all-time historical. It's been so great to watch. And just enjoy it for what it is. Pure dominance. They are the complete team, and it starts with possession control and possession dominance. Luke Weirman is tilting the field in their favor. He's winning 67%. Passing, egoless, sharing the ball across while moving around like the honeybees just buzzing on offense. It's led to incredible efficiency. Their defense is locked down. And what I love about them, they get it and they go. They score in transition. And when everything breaks down, uh, they got the Iceman in the goal, Logan McDaney, the lefty from Corning, New York. Town known for glass. And he has been the brick wall. Took it, take a look at the numbers, man. Just, just off the charts in terms of the way they've been destructing their opponents. And their superstar, Kark, he speaks softly, but oh, he carries a big stick. Oh yeah, Anish, and the number one for Maryland is designated for a player who is special, and Logan Wisnaskis is just that. He's a front runner for the Tuarton Trophy given to the best player in all of college lacrosse. His secret sauce? Well, it's his shooting ability with the left hand. He gives goalies absolute fits with that low to high type lefty shot that hammers the top section of the lacrosse goal. But he's morphed into so much more than just a goal scorer. His vision and his ability to get teammates involved. This team is moving the ball at hyperspeed because of their superstar, Logan Wisnaskis, who has morphed into so much more than just a goal scorer. Wisnowskis, the number one pick in the PLL draft, a first-team All-American, the Big Ten Player of the Year, and the front runner for the Tawartan Award, the Heisman of College Lacrosse. The task, Quint, in front of Princeton, it's Herculean. So what's the formula for an upset? Starts with belief, and that comes from your head coach, Matt Madelon, and it manifests itself through your seniors. Your veterans. On the left is George Bond. In playoff games, he's been the man of the match. He's been everywhere. Taking names, knocking people down, getting ground balls, coverage. And Eric Peters, the senior goalie from Colorado. Charismatic. He loves to play on that high arc. Did his senior thesis on 
reintroducing wolves in, into the environment in Wyoming and Wisconsin. A fascinating young man. He's, I'm a goalie. He's kind of normal. And he's got an all-time mustache. A procedure call on Tyler Sandoval and Maryland wins the opening faceoff. Luke Weirman, a first-team All-American. This is a roster littered with 12 All-Americans, four first-teamers. No discernible weakness for Maryland. The Terps, 16 and 0. They won their first two NCAA tournament games by scores of 21 to 5, and then dismantled two-time champion Virginia, 18 to 9 in the quarters. Keegan Kahn, the Villanova transfer, his shot saved by Peters. And you talked about goalie play. Eric Peters gets the first one, and now Princeton will set up its clear. Maryland's motion offense, Princeton opening up in a man-to-man -man defense. George Bond plays it back. Princeton has to get it across midfield before the shot clock hits 60, and they do. In goal for the Tigers, or rather the Terps, Logan McNaney. All four goalies who got the championship weekend saving better than 60% this postseason. McNaney the best of the bunch in the NCAA tournament at 69%. Like Maryland, Princeton offensively can spin the ball, put your head on a swivel. Chris Brown, seven assists in this tournament. Sam English, who had four goals in the regular season, lost to Maryland. Shot from the wind, McNaney's right there. For Princeton, first trip to championship weekend since 2004 that was when bill tierney was head coach roman puglisi into the attack box he's one of the short stick d middies they've got four they can roll out with very little drop off eric Molliver now sophomore from atlanta Terps have been really opportunistic in the sub portion of the game. That is running players off and capitalizing on odd man rushes. Second midfield for Maryland. Jack Brennan, he's got it. Fires wide with the left hand. It's Brennan, Jack Chorus, and Owen Murphy. Princeton's defense has been slow to double team in the NCAA tournament. And they've been superb in the NCAA tournament. Brennan dodges from the wing. Shot clock down to 10. They'll play it back to X. Here comes Keegan Kahn! And he finds Zanadu! felt it. your first couple shots are so important and if a goalie can make a clean save early and get that ball or puck touch that's going to go a long way to his confidence look at that easy easy save from McNaney and credit Keegan Khan undersized only about 170 pounds he muscles his way to the top side above goal line extended we talk about was Naskis and Keegan Kahn, the last month of the season, has been on an absolute tear. He's the second leading scorer for the Terps. He's a grad transfer from Villanova. He's just what the doctor ordered to play with the lefty Wisnaskis. And a faceoff violation this time on Maryland and Luke Wheelman. Keegan Kahn, two-time All-Big East with Villanova. One of six PLL draft picks on this Terrapins roster. Christian Ronda inverts, checked by Bubba Fairman. Bubba Fairman, an offensive midi for four years. Moving to D midi this year. Now Chris Brown, he'll attack from up top. 
against Brett Makar, a first-team All-American. Makar does not give Brown an inch. So impressive last week what Maryland did to Virginia's top two studs, Connor Schellenberger and Matt Moore. Schellenberger held without a point, Moore held to just one goal. Danger here. Maryland in transition. Khan over to Alex Smith. Fires one and a save by Peters, his second. Quick outlet. Counter Princeton. Counter. Here comes Bo Pedersen. 6 3. Feeds the wing. Shot score. Luke Crimmins. Sixth goal of the season, the 17th of his career. A converted offensive midi who now plays short stick D midi. This is big. Maryland's got the trailer break, the delay five on four break. Outside shot gobbled up by Peters, and you can counter attack. And look at Pedersen go. We talk about converted offensive players. He's a short stick defensive midfielder, 23 in black. Played attack in high school from the state of Utah. He's got the green light. The boys feel it. Q, we mentioned John Tillman's rope unit. Alex Smith is not a guy who normally shoots a ton. He takes the shot, and all of a sudden the counter. We got. We have not had one clean face off. Three face offs, and they've all been violations. Okay. I don't know what was said before the game in terms of this guy's leaning. He's in the neutral zone, but whatever it is, there's a no, no tolerance to, to the face off alignment. And that's two on Princeton, one more, and Maryland will go man up for every successive face-off violation in this first half. And they, usually the coaches will plant the seed with the officials at the at the FOGO meeting before the game. Like, sir, on tape, you know, their 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 number uh, their number 35 looks like he's in the neutral zone. Can you please keep an eye on that? Exactly, Quint. They know when they're watching tape any type of advantage they can get in terms of tendencies and seeing any discrepancies or jumps in the opposition what's more valuable than the ball here comes Khan. back shot score he was held scoreless the first time against princeton he's got two for maryland it's 2-1 Goal cam, Logan McNamee, lefty, locks it up, loaded. Great body movement. Sharing the rock. That's what Maryland does better than anyone. Number one assists in the country from a team perspective, the Terps. Everyone touches. Keegan Khan, you saw his first goal. Up goal line extended with the right hand. The soft hands, the touch lefty. And it's Maryland, I misspoke earlier, Maryland who has the two face-off violations. Wheelman wins this one to himself, all the way to the goal. And we got a flashback to last year's finish in the national championship. Wheelman telling us the last play of that title game, a loss to Virginia, has stuck with him, and it stuck with him for a long time. He won the face-off clean, accelerated toward the cage. His shot hit Virginia goalie Alex Rode in the chest. Virginia got the rebound, ran out the clock, and won by one goal. Weirman has responded after being the number two face-off man last year as a first-team All-American. 72 teams play Division I men's lacrosse. Luke is the most improved player in the nation. And for his goal by Princeton. That can't happen against the Terps. Interesting matchup, too. That was Alex Slusher who threw the ball away. He's from the state of Oregon being defended by another Oregon native, Ajax Zapatello. Zapatello blanked Connor Schellenberger last week. Here's Wisnowskis. Gives it up. Over the wing. Shot saved. Peters. That went off the cross of Anthony DeMeo. Princeton ball. Closest to the ball on a shot. When it goes out of bounds is awarded possession on a shot. Tigers fired up, and they're gonna have to win the hustle stats, the ground balls, 
the effort plays, the runouts, the chasing the shots. I mean, it's got to be everybody and every play for 60 minutes if they're going to pull this incredible upset off. But they can do it. Princeton's the top ground ball team in the Ivy League. They've shown the ability to own the middle of the field with guys like Sam English, 15 in black. Stevens, 14 in black. Those Canadian guys are absolute hoovers when the ball's on the floor. And they cause turnovers at the third highest rate in Division I. First midfield on for Princeton. Flag down. Penalty coming down for Bilski. Free possession for Princeton. Alex Verdoro plays it back to X. Colter Mackesy, the freshman. Verdoro, good look here. Save McMinney. Scooped up by Princeton, Sean Cameron. From the wing, McNamee is there again. A uh, brick wall from the glass town. You could see it early, that first shot. Man, he is on today. White, five, six, cross check, one. He's been on fire in the NCAA tournament. It continues today. Princeton's ball movement. Here's the penalty. Princeton's ball movement on this possession was gorgeous, brilliant, changing fields, getting high percentage shots. That's a great look. That's bound for the corner. McNaney gets there. The left-hander. Unbelievable. He's just dominating with any shot attempt Princeton throws low, Quint. McNaney, 66%. In his last five games, and a 33 and 1 as a starting goalie for Maryland. The lone loss in the championship last year. How about Maryland? That's Ajax Zapatello. Same first name as the mighty hero of the Iliad. Uh, if you're Princeton, you have to be happy with the start, okay? Maryland's a team that have, they've blown people away after like five or ten minutes, okay? So you're still in this game. I think the key is no Maryland transition goals, no Maryland juice goals. A Maryland a team that's won 33 of its last 34 games. Two wins away from an undefeated season, something we haven't seen since Virginia in 2006. Chorus now inverts. Has the short stick matchup. Reverses. Peters the big save. Both goalies look good early. Rebound is loose. Popped into the air. Wisnowskis grabs it. He gets clobbered. Flagged down. Uh, Princeton super athletic. They got some great looking players, big, strong, fast, and they're not gonna back down on these grounders. Black, black, number three, push, 30 seconds, three black, push, 30. Wisnowskis is so smart, Kark, he scoops this up and watch him, a little subtle turn. Feel the pressure, man. That's a KG veteran. He's been playing college lacrosse for six years. He's the all-time leading scorer at Maryland. One goal away from 200 in his career. That's only been done by five other players. Owen Murphy, great feed shot. And a score. They spin it so well. It's 3-1 Terrapins. And a first quarter hat trick wow. for Keegan Khan. If you're a young player, a young coach, clip this baby off. This is, a, this is a textbook example of extra man lacrosse. Every pass, 
on the money. One cradle, zip, zip, zip. Turn and rake. Of 2022, there's really no weakness. Every facet of the game, they just, uh, they really just took it to us. In a moment's notice, they can kind of break the game open. And it's not just one guy. They were as sharp, uh, as well balanced, and as unselfish a group as I think I've ever coached against. The way they have consistently played. I mean, their average margin is almost 10 goals a game. The Maryland Terrapins will go down in the history of college across as one of the very elite teams to ever come together. Anish Shroff, Quint Kasnick, Paul Carcaterra, John Tillman. That's the best coach in the game right now. Since he took over at Maryland, I know you can point to that they've lost five times on Memorial Day. They have been a championship contender almost every season that he has been at the helm since he took over. Nobody has more tournament wins, nobody has more All-Americans, and nobody's been to more Set. national semifinals. Sandoval looking to win it for Princeton. He does. Then he lost it. His ground balls become so critical. And guess what? Maryland's got it. Matt Rahill. Quint, they have a counter for everything. Yeah, and they attack you in all phases. That's what's been so impressive, whether it's the settled offense with their motion offense, the people movement, the ball movement, extra man, scoring off the face-offs, scoring in transition. There's no glaring weakness either. There's not like a soft spot of this Maryland team. They don't give you any creases or cracks to like get a wedge in there and blow it open. Here comes Kyle Wong, and he splashes one home. One of the 12 All-Americans on the Terps. 4-1 Maryland. Speed's not a weakness. Not for Kyle Long and not for the middle of the field when you think about the Terps. They know who they're playing. Princeton is good on the floor. Well, they're going to match them today. Championship weekend, you sell out. You go after every grounder. And this is a team that can strike fast. The season ended today. Their 18-plus goals will be the most in NCAA lacrosse history. And they do it with players like Kyle Long. Depth of scoring is a huge asset for this team. It looks like right now that Princeton's slow to double team. They're slow to slide up field. So Maryland's going to have to score some unassisted goals. Maryland has had 10 games in which at least 10 different left. players have scored. 31 goals, almost two a game from non-offensive players. And here comes a Maryland run now. That's three in a row for the Terps. So important that Princeton doesn't give them those, those more than three goal runs. Anthony DeMeo, sixth year senior. He was on that 2017 Maryland team that won a national championship. Here comes Long. Over to Jonathan Downville, the Cornell transfer. The top pick in the NLL draft and the second round pick in the PLL draft. Donville. Over to Wisnowskis. Can't feel the clean. Pace Billings off the carpet for Princeton. Billings and Bond getting it done. Can Princeton generate shots? The last time these two teams played, Maryland outshot them 50 to 23. Princeton's applied some pressure, but Logan McNaney has closed the door early. That was a five-goal Maryland win. Eric Peters, the Princeton goalie, 19 saves. Princeton's offense, it's a motion pattern. They love to run these sweeps. Here the comes Ronda. The players can carry their strong hand. Chris Brown, he's a lefty. Has really improved as a feeder. Now Mackesy. Princeton trying to win a matchup. Mackesy was against Higgins. Shot clock under 20. Brown on Ray Hill. 
McNaney gobbles it up too easy. Maryland's defensive midfield is as good as I've ever seen. Okay, maybe the best as a foursome with Bubba Fairman, Roman Puglisi, Jake Higgins, and Alex Smith. I can't recall a team having four D midfielders of that quality. And a defense, remember, is only as good as their weakest link. And okay. Kark, three of them were drafted in the PLL. That tells you everything. It's crazy. I mean, you think about that short stick defensive midfield position. They're like cornerbacks in football, right? You put them at an island. Every team attacks those guys. Loyola was incredible in 2012 when they won the national title. But they didn't have four guys. This is crazy. They throw two fresh guys every single defensive possession. Here comes Brennan. He was a first-line midfielder two years ago. Princeton really pressing out. Molliver's backs are saved by Peters. The rebound. Not there for Kirsch. That will be Princeton ball. Princeton's taking Maryland out of their comfort zone a little. The motion offense. And they're pressing out and forcing the Terps to be Dodgers. I had one coach tell me earlier this week. He said, the problem with Maryland, you can get great goaltending. Your defense can play its best game. You can hold them to 12. They can still beat you by five. Less than 90 seconds to go in quarter number one. Mackesy against Ray Hill. Gets the pick. There's Tommy Barnes. He began the season on attack. Now on that second midfield. Working on Alex Smith. Looking for Brown. It's intercepted. Bubba Fairman. Sandy, Utah. Fairman all the way, scores! There's that defensive midfield that runs four deep. There's your juice goal, Quint. You said no juice goals. No one has loved more than Bubba. Starts with defense. Princeton jams this ball inside, and Fairman's there, and then he's off to the races. A former offensive midfielder. It's symbolic. The we over me. This was the guy who's running shifts as a first midfielder from Maryland. Had a meeting with coach. And now he's a D midi. And that's what he'll be as a pro. He's made that sacrifice to make this team better. Second round pick in the PLL draft. Boston Cannons right now. Smiling and salivating to get Bubba. Few in Division I have sacrificed as much as Bubba Fairman. A four-year starter on the first midfield, moving to the rope unit. That's what was best for the team in 2022. Now, we wondered, how would the delay impact these teams, Kark? Both came to the stadium, went back to the hotel. It hasn't bothered Maryland one bit. Your machine. As long as the bus got here. Slusher turned back around. 25 seconds to go. Quarter number one. 5 1 Maryland. Mackesy spins it back to Ronda. Vardaro shot denied. Six saves now for McNaney. Puglisi shaken up. Eight and white. Limping off the field. Quarter number one. Comes to an end. There's Keegan Khan. Cue up the damsel with the dulcimer. The Maryland Symphony humming early. McNaney strong in goal. It's 5-1 Terps after 15 minutes. It's been all Terps in East Hartford, but their superstar short stick defensive midfielder, Roman Puglisi, the leader of the deepest defensive midfield in America. You see him playing defense there. He came off the field within literally 10 seconds, ran to the locker room. It looked like his right wrist. You saw the impact when he was sliding and applied pressure to the Princeton offensive player. He is unequivocally 
one of their leaders, one of the best in America at his position. He's gritty, he's tough. His passion, his passion runs through this team and the leadership, super smart young man. You hate to see that. Maryland, as we talked about in that first quarter, they have depth in the defensive midfield. Sandoval wins the faceoff to himself, pushing forward, whiffs, and he comes right back to the Terps. A chance for a run out for Gepard. He's got a trailer in Fairman. Fairman had the win, Murphy was open, he didn't see him. Owen Murphy had a look on that left wind. Princeton gets it across that Mangano clear, and here's Bo Pedersen. The Tigers' only goal came off of the save. Yeah, Transition goal, nothing in the settled sets. Exactly. We've talked a lot about the path of these Ivy League teams. Princeton has run down. Fires a laser past McNaney. 5 2. This is Gats. And they haven't been able to solve McNaney with straight heat, but this time Ronda places this ball beautifully. You see a little shake in his first move towards the middle of the field. He gets Smith to bite. Smith, no contact. Too easy for Ronda. Alex Smith. The D midi, remember, he's coming off a torn ACL. This time recovering at the start of the season. And Ronda has taken his game up and out to this postseason. Maryland's adjacent defender there has got to step up field a li little as if to show Ronda that I'm coming after you. I'm going to double you to be a deterrent. Just too much space, too easy. Here's the issue, though. You get that goal. And then you got to deal with Luke Wehrman. I mean, it's just, they come at you in all sorts of ways. There is no deficiency on this Maryland team. It makes it so hard, Kark, to get a sustained run. And then you have to play this much defense. Like, how do you expect your defense not to get tired? You're not deep at the defensive midfield position like Maryland. Pedersen's out there almost every shift. Murphy to Donville and DeMeo now. Tony time, known for those clutch goals. Wisnowskis from a sweet spot, bounces it home. Oh man. You talk about next level. Educated cerebral shooting on this natural grass surface that's wet. The ball movement is dizzying. He's able to set his feet and the high bouncer pays a corner. In this, this angle, you will love this shot. Use the earth. Use the earth. Quick. Yesterday, I heard John Tillman say specifically to Logan, practice your bounce shots. And if you saw the open, you saw his ability to shoot low to high, and now he comes with a completely different release. It's unbelievable. Bobby Benson, 14 years at Johns Hopkins as an offensive coordinator, flipped over to the dark side for us Hopkins alums, but he's done a, a remarkable work in the last two years as the OC. Th this offense is going places that I don't think we've ever seen in this sport, Anish, in terms of people movement, ball movement, uh, amoeba-like. You can set this offense to Moonlight Sonata, and it's in step and in rhythm. And Bobby Benson, for teams out there looking for a potential future head coach, and he will be in demand. Rwanda whistles this one wide. Christian Rwanda, six goals now in this NCAA tournament. One of 720 goal scorers for Princeton. They can come at you from a lot of different places. It's a top five offense nationally for the Tigers. That's a top five defense for Maryland. Brett Makar 
The Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year has got it for the Terps. Defensively, Maryland understands opportunity. When is a, a, a ball player, when has he put himself in, in a threat to turn it over? You dodge to an area maybe you shouldn't have, you turn your back on an adjacent defender, boom, they attack you, get the ball in the carpet. Oliver from X. He's got Mulshaw, the freshman, hung up. Peters hedges out of the cage. Milver feeding him front. There was an empty net for a moment. Princeton recovers. Alex Slusher, five and black, the junior out of Portland, Oregon. The Tigers' top goal scorer with 45 tallies. And we've got a procedure call on Princeton. Yeah, they had too many guys. Probilski in transition. Nearly lost it, recovered the bobble. Maryland's an amazing restart team this year, Nish. On all whistles, change of possessions. Minor penalties, they get the ball and they're thinking to attack. There's a vulnerability with all restarts. John Tillman calls a timeout for Maryland. We'll take one, two. Three for Keegan Khan. Maryland up 6 2. 6 2, Maryland and the Terps giving us the full variety pack early on. If you don't slide to Maryland and you put them on an island, they've got ISO Dodgers who can make you look silly. Maryland scores in a lot of different ways. One is off the dodge, Keegan Khan, working hard to get to pay dirt. The second is on the extra man. Brilliant, pinpoint passing. You want to run? Give it to a runner, an athlete, Bubba Fairman. Drafted by the PLL Cannons for this very reason to take the ball from one end of the field to the other in transition. A defensive midfielder who can score. Wisnowski's egoless shooting. You think about a lefty there, he's gonna plant his feet and rip a corner low to high, right? Uh, 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 uh. He throws you the big curveball, the big slider. He uses this wet surface. Use the earth, Logan. That was the 200th goal of Wisnowski's career. Just the sixth in Division I history to reach that plateau. His former teammate Jared Bernhardt did it last year. And he's got a chance to follow Bernhardt and also Matt Rambo from 2017 as the Tawartan winner. Long spins past his man. Fires wide. Donville's got the backup. Q, we talked about with Rutgers how they have used the transfer portal so is maryland donville and Khan. they come to mind right away owen murphy from hopkins wisnowski started his career at syracuse the mayo's been a tough the whole time as maryland turns it over princeton's hanging tough roman Puglisi coming out of the tunnel helmet off Park will have an update on his status. George Bond, 17 in black, an All-American. Princeton has to get it across midfield, and they do just before that shot clock hits 60. Verdoro. get the feeling it's got to come from the midfielders for Princeton. It looks like you know, Brown's being covered by Maycar, Slusher's being covered by Zapatello. Guys like Sam English, Rondo, and Alex Bardaro have to be the key initiators. English 15 in black, a crafty Canadian. Back to Makasu. There's Brown against Maycar. Brown going left. That's his strong hand. Maycar stays with him. Slusher prevents a turnover. 
Zapatello on Slusher. Rhonda working on Higgins. Shot clock at 10. And Verdaro beat Alex Smith. He'll give it up. English against Probilski had to put it on goal. And McNaney has his easiest save of the game. Smith takes a tumble. That's a push with possession. And a free possession for Maryland. Terps in the second quarter, more turnovers than shots. Brennan on the invert against Crimmins. Now Wisnowskis toward the cage. Save Peters. Ball still loose. And now Maryland will have the extra man. You like Princeton here as we take a look at this penalty. You like Princeton to play it straight up defensively, or would you throw some wrinkles at this extra man unit? Would you press out or shut somebody off? I think they move the ball too quickly to throw a gimmick. I think you play tighter and you rely on Peter Zagoli, who's made huge stops, 19 saves last time against the Turks. You gimmick ball that man, they will make you pay. The ball moves too quickly. You're watching it there. And it's textbook. The plays will the play, slam dunk. He's playing straight up. They're gonna, they're gonna dribble the ball in and dunk it on your face. That's back-to-back -back extra man goals. Complete layups with ball movement. The big smile from Donville. That's ridiculous passing, Paul. It's crazy. This is what makes Maryland Maryland. But Princeton's head's spinning. They're not on the back pipes at all. And I'm saying play it tight. You gotta play the pipes. Give the outside shot, right? Get into your diamond man down defense. Give the outside shot. When you allow the back pipes to be that open, <laughs> no shot. The first man up goal was Khan from Donville. This one is Donville from Khan. Get her to Thurman. Over to Wisnowskis. One more. Wisnowskis over to Kepler, the long pole with the shot, save Peters, rebound is loose. And Wisnowskis able to vacuum, turns the corner, and pumps the brakes. Berman shoots it, Fairman shoots it wide. Khan didn't have the ball, and now Princeton's got it. Crimmins. Look at the two Princeton goals. It's been Crimmins in transition. It was Rondo. Those are not the usual suspects. Now it's got to come from the midfield if you're Princeton. Just remarkable. This Maryland team. I mean, there is a couple moments all year where they've been a little uncomfortable in a game. Ohio State. Led them seven to three. Brown backing down Makar. And McNaney's got the backup. Here's the deal, though. You're talking about going through the midfield. They're so deep at the short stick defensive midfield spot, even when Puglisi's out of the game. But if you try to generate anything from the attack, they have two erasers. Like, if yeah. you look at what they've done to teams that have two big attackmen because of Brett Makar, 43, in white. Ajax Zapatello, 36 in white. They erase teams' top options. Look what they did to Virginia last week with Connor Schellenberger and Matt Moore. Took them completely out of the game. I completely agree. I think you got to go after seven in white, Matt Rahill. Long turns to the corner. Lars Tiffany can hear it all in our studio, thinking thanks for the reminder. We'll hear from him and Matt Ward and Chris Cotter at halftime. Billing 
Adams gives it up. Important five minutes now for Princeton, obviously. You're hanging around one or two before halftime would be enormous. Cart, the amazing thing about Maryland, and we can exhaust every superlative by the time this game's over, but from February to now, there has not been a drop-off. Princeton finding a seam. Mackesee just ran down the alley. 7-3. Quint called it. He said go after seven. Quint, look what Mackesee does. But it all starts with belief in your defense. Kyle Long tries to penetrate. Peter says, not now, Quint. Look, Matt Ray Hills is an excellent player, seven in white, but you gotta, again, attack the weakest link of a defense. And after watching tape all season long, I can't go after Zapatello, I can't go after Makar. Puglisi, Fairman, and Higgins, I think are A-plus cover guys. Like, who's left? By the process of elimination, you have to isolate against seven and white. You gotta pick somebody. Exactly. Maryland has not trailed today. They've hardly trailed all season. Zapatello. Last year, he was the number two long pole. This year, he's one of the best defenders in the country. And then hit the crossbar. Long on the rebound. Beating inside. Khan dropped it. Still on the ground. Kick toward the sideline. Wisnowskis and Bond battling. It's inbounds. A lot of rain earlier on this grass. Knocked out. Last touch, Maryland. Big, big scrap. Tigers trying to hang around, trying to hang around. Take this game 60 minutes. Bring Maryland into deep waters. We don't know if they can swim. Very few fourth quarter games for the Terps this season. That shot clock was correct. Why did they reset it? I did. I thought you gave, I thought you gave possession to Mike. So we got to go back to 64. That's it where was it was. No, 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 no. It was damn close. It was damn close, but, but right, right. It looked to me like he was going to clear that ball. Fuck. I thought you gave White a possession. You're going to be all the way up there at 60. Right here. Play stopped due to a clock issue, as you heard there. We apologize for the language. Officials today, Brian Abbott, P.J. Colello, Michael Harold, and they're trying to figure out how much time should be on the shot clock for clearing. Ball's got to be over the midfield line before the clock hits 60. Ball's right here at 60. This Princeton team, under Matt Madelon, number three in the polls in 2020 when the season ended, Michael Sowers was putting together a historic campaign. COVID cuts the season short. Sowers transfers to Duke. No Ivy League season last year. And Princeton, for the bulk of this season, had been near the top of the polls. They had back-to-back wins against Georgetown and Rutgers earlier. You talk about going through a gauntlet. They put Maryland, Georgetown, and Rutgers in succession. Won two out of three. Only lost to the Terps. Madeline's a great recruiter this year. Rondo too high. Really stamps his status nationally. Former goalie at Roanoke and with the San Francisco Dragons and Major League Lacrosse. Got two daughters. Love his staff with Jim Mitchell, Mitchell and, and Jeremy Hirsch, young defensive coordinator. Slusher wheels it to Bordeaux. Higgins on him. The low to high. McNaney snags it out of the air. Well, we still have not seen Roman Puglisi, who left the game in the first quarter with an injury. Puglisi, one of the top shorties in the country, maybe the top shorty. Carl, do you have an update there? Yeah, he came out of the locker room, and he, she fired up the 
entire team, he's screaming out all of them, then just ran right back. Didn't have his helmet, didn't have the rest of his pads on. Jersey was still on, but he looked like he was hurt in that right wrist area and upper body injury. It didn't look good, but he wanted to make sure that his team hurt him. Donville from the wing against Pedersen. Plays it back to X and Oliver. This hung situation, it's... Save Peters, denying Long. It's a constant. I don't think any team in the country gets more hung situations than Maryland. Product is ball moving. Burns to Slusher. And Maryland recovers defensively. A lot of firsts for Princeton this year. First trip to the NCAA tournament in a decade. First tournament win since 09. Patterson missed the cage. Flag down. Oh, that was vicious. It's a big boy. Wing dodge, watch right to left. Wow, Gepard comes in here, and this ends up being pretty high. Follows through with the elbow. It's hard there because the ball carrier is changing levels as he comes in. He's slipping, he's dropping. Wait, wait. Number 20, illegal body check, targeting the head. Three minutes, full time. Back up, man. Back wow, up. three Back minutes, full time, so that is not releasable. And this is a real opportunity for Princeton to make some headway and dent a four-goal deficit. That's tough because, like Quint was saying, he changed his levels body-wise. I didn't see the malicious intent there. I didn't feel like it was egregious. The impact and how he was hit, yes. But normally when you get locked in like that, it's egregious. And to make it clear, that's a judgment call by the officials in that scenario. It's like targeting in college football, but in terms of how that penalty is adjudicated, the severity of it, that's up to the officials. You can go one minute all the way up to three, and it's not releasable. So Princeton will have a man up for the full three minutes, a chance to score multiple goals with a man advantage. I do not agree. I do not think that was malicious. I don't think the intent was to elbow the ball carrier in the head. Yeah, it happened. I, I would have given that a one minute non-releasable. If you are just joining us earlier today, Cornell took it to Rutgers 17 to 10. The Big Red will play in the national championship for the first time since 2009. They are seeking their first national title since 1977. That's Monday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. NCAA.com is your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Again, 1 p.m. Eastern Monday, the NCAA lacrosse championship game. Cornell against the winner of this game. And Quint, we talk about a pivot point in a game. It's 7-3. Maryland has had a cushion for most of this game. Uh, this is an entry point for Princeton to make it close. And like you said, see if Maryland can play in deep waters. Take this game into the second half. This penalty will carry over into the second half as a three-minute non-releasable. But you got to be aggressive. You know, to pull off great upsets, you don't stall your way there. You don't hope to keep it close. You got to attack. You got to punch first and keep punching. Now, remember, if Princeton has the ball... When the half expires, there's no face-off to begin the second half. It'll be Princeton ball with the man advantage for about a minute. Tigers 43% with the extra man this season, and they get one. Right on the doorstep, Chris Brown. Well, here we go. We talked about Maryland not offering cracks or openings or opportunities. That penalty is a significant opening. 
It's a carry and just a feed to the back post. For some reason, Maryland does not rotate down the back side. This defense has to rotate opposite the ball. Just a breakdown of communication for the Terps. Here's the issue, though. You have a three-minute unreleasable. You can zap some clock. You can get another scoring opportunity. The problem is now you deal with the best face-off man in America in Luke Weirman. He will zap the penalty himself. And he does. Stroke into the cage. Tranchek. Princeton comes away with it. It's Sandoval. Still plenty of time on the man up. And again, Princeton ends the half with possession. They will have the ball. No face-off to begin the third quarter. Matt Madelon wants a timeout. There is a very real pendulum swing in this game. They're not backing down. They are not backing down. This, this team has come too far to turn back now. They finished the regular season in a big-time slump. They lost against Harvard. They lost at home against Cornell. They looked gassed. They looked tired in those games. They took the time off. They weren't in the Ivy League tournament. They went to upgrade season. I mean, they've been a different and better version in the tournament. Especially on the defensive side. And this is a program that forged its history in the 90s. Really a nothing burger of a program until Bill, Bill Tierney came to Princeton. Ten championship weekend appearances under the great Bill Tierney. 1992, they came here to the national semifinals as massive underdogs, Quint. Yeah, Tierney, and they shocked everybody. Tierney took the program over in 88. 92, they're at the championship weekend with Syracuse, North Carolina, and Johns Hopkins. Programs that have, like, won every title since, since forever, since World War II almost. Tierney state-of-the-art defense initially, okay? He used that double-teaming packages where he turned ball carriers to the weak hand and double. And then when they got good, all of a sudden you had the Princeton diploma, you had Bill Tierney defenses, and you had super high-end recruits, and that led to 96, 97, and 98. 96, 97, 98, a three-peat. Kark, 92, it started with Andy Moe in overtime off the face-off wing. I was there as a high school junior, and no one thought Princeton was ready for that moment other than the Tigers. 96, 97, 98, Hess, Hubbard, Massey, maybe the best attack of all time. And as Quint mentioned, Bill Tierney changed the defensive game. But I will tell you, field level, even when Maryland was going on that run, from a physicality perspective, Princeton was matching Maryland for every single ground ball and fighting tooth and nail. They're, they're not backing down. English feeds inside. Bout shot saved. McManey. Nine first half saves for the junior from Corning. Higgins in an ambush. It's not close. And Higgins was out of bounds. Back to Princeton. Okay, Quint. Do you settle for possession to begin the third quarter? Or are you attacking here in the last 40 seconds? I mean, I think you got to play to win and be aggressive. Once the clock goes to 15, I would hold it. I agree. Now they're going to hold already because Luke Wehrman is a real deterrent to having a face-off to start the third quarter. So they will hold. They'll have about a minute left to go on the penalty when the third quarter starts. And remember, that is a non-releasable penalty. So they will have that man up for the full minute. They're hanging they around. Have the ball. They're Tigers, around. Are, Tigers are hanging around, no question. The, the burden of pressure now, the longer this stays a game, shifts to the Turks. And I've seen these games go sideways when the big favorite doesn't come easy for them. It was 7-2 Maryland, and it felt like we were on the verge of maybe that Tyson haymaker that the Turks have thrown so many times this season. Princeton with that three-minute non-releasable with a chance to get back into the game. Down to Kark. Coach, what did you think about the three-minute non-releasable penalty? Um, uh, listen, we just got to deal with it. It is what it is. They called it. We just got to fund it now. You've seen all types of defenses against your offense. What's the best way to attack this Princeton defense? Uh, I think they're really athletic. Um, they have good schemes. Our coaches do a great job. You know, I just think at times we've been a little bit frantic and rushed. I think we just got to catch our breath sometimes, make sure we get organized, get the ball popping, and then that's when we're at our best. 
How would you describe the play of your goalie, Logan McNaney? He's been great. Uh, he's bailed us out, uh, so hopefully we can kind of catch our breath here, regroup, get a little bit of a break, and then hopefully get a stop and then get the, get the ball to our offense. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. John Tillman from the same hometown as Logan McNaney. His Terps have a three-goal lead after 30 minutes. Maryland one half away from a date with Cornell in the national championship. Unless a charging tiger of rebellion can mount a comeback. Halftime here in East Hartford at Rentschler Field, Maryland with a 7-4 lead. The Terps undefeated Princeton looking to get to the championship game where Cornell awaits the winner on Monday. New Shroff, Quinn Kesnick. We'll hear from Kark in just a moment. Maryland came out early tone setter. It was Keegan Kahn. Yeah, the Terps got off to a good start, I thought, early behind Keegan Kahn and, and his uh, unassisted goals. But I got to tell you, Anish, I haven't seen the same emotion from this Maryland Ter Terp team. The last seven minutes, they haven't scored a goal. Like, there's a little vulnerability right now for the Terps that I haven't seen all season. Maryland early on had the offense going. It slowed down, as Q said, later in that second quarter. And Keegan Kahn, the party starter, a first half hat trick. Uh, extra man precision pass on tic tac toe. That's why they call it execution. Backside feed, Steinville Kahn up 7 to 2, but they haven't scored in the last 745 after Wisnowskis nails this scintillating bounce shot. Little spinorama. Huge penalty late. The three minute non releasable. On Geppert from Maryland, that's opened the door for Princeton. They scored Chris Brown from English to make it 7-4. to four. Princeton's playing really good defense, and, and Maryland, I just, they, they don't look like themselves emotionally, Anish. Well, they did lose one of their emotional leaders, Roman Puglisi, to an injury in that first half as we check in with Kark. Yeah, Roman does not have his gear on right now, but I caught up with Matt Madelon, the Princeton head coach. He knows his team is close. He believes they can play with the Terps. He said the transition game is crushing them right now. Maryland, one of the best sub teams in the country. They need to clean up in terms of the way that they substitute on the fly. He said defensively with Maryland, the ball moves so quickly. You need to be patient. You need to believe in your base defense. He said they've been too antsy, over committing, over extending. They need to trust their communication in terms of their base defense. Puglisi, the All-American short stick d -Midi, a first-team All-American, a first-round PLL pick. Watch him come in from the right side of your screen. That looked like a cross-check he got away with. He injured his right arm, went to the locker room. It seems doubtful at this point that he will return. The opening minute of this third quarter could be critical. Princeton starts with possession, no face-off, and they have one minute and one second on a non-releasable man up. Tone setter for the rest of the half. Alexander Verdaro will start with the ball for the Princeton Tigers. 11 and 4 entering this game out of the Ivy League. One of the Ivy brethren, Cornell, already won today and will play Monday's championship. Twilight encroaches. Nice swim move. Ooh, that shot missed the cage. Jake Stevens, who leads the team with five man up goals. Maryland has the backup, and so the Terps get possession, and they'll try to kill these final 29 seconds on the Princeton extra man. Maryland turns it over. Andrew Song picked it up. Princeton gives it right back. Fairman now lost it. Slusher near the midfield line. Rusher veers down the alley toward the cage and shoots high. Another flag. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. 
Jack McDonald, the push from behind, while Slusher had possession. I disagree, I don't see it. I get the subtle feeling that these officials are struggling right now. I wouldn't say it's subtle. Given Princeton life, also Maryland's turnovers. They only had two turnovers in the first quarter, seven in the second quarter, early turnovers in this third quarter, giving Princeton Opportunity after opportunity after turnovers. Princeton's got to take advantage. This is an extended man up. And right now, it's six on four. Not six on five. Terps face guard and Chris Brown, six and black. McAsee thought about it, pulls it back. Now Verdaro. Winston does not get a shot off. Back to even strength. Fairman out of the box. McAsee won a matchup on Ray Hill earlier in this game. He'll try to isolate Ray Hill. McAsee whips it wide. The backup to Princeton and Brown. Maryland's made more mistakes in this game than I can recall in any game this year. They're opening the door. Princeton's got to, got to take advantage of it. Brown to the cage. Not there. Turned away. The hustle awarded to Zapatillo. Fires up the bench, too. That bench has been dead today by Maryland standard. Usually, they, they, it's a mosh pit over there. I haven't seen that, Clark. I have not seen that today. Well, that's a, a juice-type play, right, from Ajax Zapatello. Under the radar recruit. One of the late gets out of the state of Oregon for... John Tillman and he has answered the bell, exceeded every single expectation, transformed his body, and he is a competitor. Look away! Molliver against Finley. DeMeo. Patterson matching feet. DeMeo with that left hand and misses wide. Clark, do you think the weather delay impacted these teams? Look away! It's hard to say. I mean, Maryland has not had any distractions all season long. Like, every time you thought they'd have a game off or a letdown, they've always answered the bell. Both went to the hotel around the same time, so they got two hours in the hotel. There's the ball move. Nick Myover's shot. A kick saved by Peters. Maryland corrals the rebound to New 60. Be the best is their mantra. That was special team offense, the way they share it and move it. Okay. Kyle Long, dangerous as an invert midi. Now Donville, the Cornell transfer. Feeding inside to Wisnowskis. The defense is packed in. You can tell it's packed in compared to the first half. The margin for error on this pass from Donville to Wisnaskis Quint, it's nil. The Terps hunt dunks and layups. They don't take maybe shots. The shot selection and ability deep in the shot clock to keep the ball hot, always looking for the best shot. Donville, a pair of future pros in the PLL, Premier Lacrosse League, hook up on that one, and there is... He'll be the Tuarton winner. I, I'd put up, I'd put everything I own on that. I'd put everything you own on that too. <laughs> Me too. How about Logan though? He's completely transformed his body as well. I was talking about Ajax. Off season, he was 215 pounds, down to 197. Hasn't had a sweep since Christmas. Here comes Wilden. And Peters wins the race. Beat Khan to the end line. Clark, I noticed that about Logan yesterday practice. I went up to him. I'm like, man, you're pretty fit. You're pretty thin. It's he crazy. He kind of chuckled. He used to be kind of big and a little on the soft side. He was a great high school quarterback. He was a right-handed high school quarterback. He told us he does everything right-handed except golf and lacrosse, where he is dominant with the left hand. He writes with his right hand. He throws with his right hand. Plays tennis with his right hand, too. 
so regimented. He told me he never wavers from his diet. Oatmeal in the morning, turkey sandwich at lunch, chicken and rice. He's on the oh, Keswick plan. He sounds like Russ. Russ set a Connecticut state record for hot dogs consumed during that <laughs> lightning delay. Statistician Russ to win. <laughs> Hands still working. Here comes Mackesy, left hand free. Now English. He can work tight spaces. Mackesy's yeah, got that great release for Doris. Oh, yeah. Ouch! That nailed Fairman. Wow, Maryland's getting banged up in this game. See, Princeton can play offense too. They reset the shot clock and hits the turf. Fairman, after taking that shot, why'd they reset the shot clock? Oh no, it should have been over and back. Why'd they reset the shot clock? It should have been over and back. That was not a shot on goal. It hit a player. The ball didn't hit the goal or the goalie. It huh? hit Bubba's helmet. That's yeah. why it was not an over and back. It hit his helmet and went the entire side of the field. But why they reset the shot clock? Here comes English against Smith. Trail check. Marilyn Barr. Eight four Terps, 9.34 to go, third quarter. Here comes Brennan. Driving into the sunset, Brennan makes it a five-goal lead for the Terps. Junior out of Rochester. They went to the same high school as a couple of Terrapin greats, Joe Walters and Andrew Whipple. Toughness on defense, Bubba Fairman. And he, he, he got lucky. He really did. You shouldn't turn your back. Shouldn't turn your back on a shooter like that. And there's Brennan. Teams have not been sliding to him. When you watch the Terps on tape, there's certain players like Kyle Long that attract the defensive slide. Brennan, they are daring him to beat him as a Dodger. And obviously, he has the ability. Nation's best second midfield. Oh, Brennan's a guy two years ago was running on the first midfield injured last year To mail out of the box Over to Donville and now Murphy on that first midfield Princeton very aggressive on ball. DeMeo gets some separation from Billings. Looking to get to that left hand, he does. Plus, plus. Pressing out is Princeton, almost inviting Maryland to score unassisted goals. Here comes Khan. Question mark's not there. Dislodged back to DeMeo. Murphy with an absolute Hadouken. He's got hands of gold. Watch 55 in white. The double team comes from Princeton, a timely one. But the Terps get the second chance, and you cannot give this offense that type of opportunity. Look at the stretch shooting ability of Owen Murphy. Wow, have a corner. Grip it and rip it. As Khan is falling down to the ground on that play, he swiped the ball upfield to DeMeo, and then you see Maryland's one more. The unselfishness, the egoless offense working for the 10-yarder. 33rd goal of the season for Murphy. The Hopkins transfer, Weirman to the wing. Murphy again. And this 
is what Maryland can do to you. Four straight and avalanche. They don't let up. They attack in all facets. And when Weirman's winning draws, they stack goals. This is unbelievable in terms of Murphy's release. You saw the last shot. Three-quarter release to the top left corner. This time, the same release, opposite corner. Murphy and the Terps, they're rolling in East Hartford. Next weekend, it's the PLL on ESPN. We are excited. Quint Clark and myself will be in Albany for week one of the PLL. We'll see six Maryland Terrapins who will play pro lacrosse in the Premier Lacrosse League. Clark, you and I and Quint, we always talk about how we get to championship weekend. It's bittersweet. It's the end of the season. We're stuck with Quint for an entire summer now. We're going to keep rolling, man. Yeah. Look, I... I get sad after this weekend, but with the PLL and the partnership with ESPN, I'm as happy as can be. We're heading up to Albany next week. What I love about pro lacrosse, heroes for the kids, excellence, like guys like Grant Amon, Trevor Baptiste, 26, 27, 28 year olds who continue to get better and pushing the game forward and then fan friendly. Rodaro shot saved on the rebound. Brown, oh, there's McManey again. A long outlet scooped up. You can go over and back in the first 60 seconds, or in the first 20 seconds of the shot clock. And credit to what Paul Rabel has built. There is great ambition with the PLL. We can't wait for it to be a part of the ESPN family. And we're excited to have Pro Lacrosse on our airwaves again starting next weekend. When you think of the PLL and professional lacrosse, no hey, program has hold, generated hold, more hold, pros hold. than the University of Maryland. How many of them are on the whip snakes? I stopped counting at least a dozen, right? Led by Matt Rambo, 2017 national champ. Behind the back. That's a heat check for Murphy. Murphy's feeling it now. He got so much power in that little frame. I don't know how he does it. Here comes Donville. Little pick game with Murphy. Donville draws the slide. Hung! Hung! Now khan has got his man hung up. Donville! A whirling dervish. Four on the shot clock. Michael. Now seven Michael, four games right. short. Yeah. Coming into this third quarter, Princeton began the third quarter with a minute and a second left on a non-releasable penalty. Could not score. And Maryland has rattled off four straight. Now Maryland suddenly looking like Maryland. The scary part. You watch Princeton today. Quint, they're fighting. They're playing hard. It's not like you can sit here and say Princeton has not played well. A lot of what you're seeing the Tigers not able to do has a lot to do with who's on the other side and the personnel from Maryland. Pedersen plays it back to X. Now Mackesy. They'll feed the middle. Pedersen. Slusher. Tomahawk goal. Princeton ends a 4-0 Maryland run. Can't question the effort. This Princeton Tiger team, field level. Gentlemen, they are fighting, they're clawing. They belong on this stage. The only issues they're running into an all-time buzzsaw in the Terps. 
But Alex Slusher and the rest of the Tigers fighting for every loose ball. Portland, Oregon, Slusher. He's on the uh, U.S. U21 team that'll go to Ireland this summer. He'll offer Coach Nick Myers of Ohio State a little versatility, attack, and midfield. Big year, big year. Kid's got a lot of will and intensity. The Oregon Trail in lacrosse starting to produce some high-end talent. It started with Peter Baum, former Tawarton winner at Colgate in 2012. We've seen it with guys like John Duffy at Loyola, Tucker Dordovic at Syracuse, Sam Handley, Slusher, Ajax Zapatello from Maryland, Ross Scott earlier today from Rutgers. It's crazy, but Peter Baum made it real for all those kids, right? They were eight, nine, ten-year-olds watching someone from their state, the state of Oregon, kind of an unknown lacrosse-wise, win the biggest trophy, the biggest individual trophy in the sport, the Tawarton, it becomes real. Like, you have a tangible dream. Now Ross Scott, the Rutgers attacking, telling us that as he got older and started playing lacrosse, he heard the name Peter Baum, went on YouTube, started looking at his old highlights and said, hey, that's a, that's an Oregon guy. Ronda's shot. Off the pipe. It stays with Princeton. Brown will trigger on the far side as twilight sets in here at the rink. Ronda's dangerous, isn't he? Off the invert. Limited experience-wise prior to the season. He's a 20-goal scorer for Princeton. Has one today. Six in the tournament. Tigers were unranked when the season started. Bardolo, and that's two straight. The Tigers refuse to go down right away. A constant at Princeton lacrosse games this year has been the support of the students. It tells you that this team is well-liked on campus. Murphy throws that one in the dirt at the other end. It's the Tigers. And Vardaro is scouted as a big-time right-handed shooter. He shows you some versatility, gets that little hitch, and Smith does not make contact. As Coach Madelon knows, there's still some life here. And now the challenge, the face-off X. This is where Maryland has been able to dent any momentum from the opposition all season. But Princeton scraps and wins the faceoff. Maryland wins it back. Here comes Fairman. No call. Wow, that looked like a hold. Fairman's got one today. Over to Murphy off the crossbar. Oh -ho. Now Brown's got it. Can Princeton counter? Off the scramble. Brown, nobody picks him up. Had the wing, no angle there. Maybe a missed opportunity for the Tigers. Zapatello shading Brown, who's trying to get to that left hand, has to give it up. Mackesee over to the wing. Good look, too high. That was Slusher. Slusher draws the slide. McNaney with another save. 13 now. Smooth to Geppert. And this is where Maryland can run. Geppert having some trouble finally. Able to corral the grounder. Cue that last possession. Princeton looked like it may have had a chance unsettled, and then got a great look from Slusher on the wing. When you have an opening against Maryland, you have to hit. Oliver picked up by the freshman Mulshaw, and he's going to be a good one. 43 and black. Left, 
Long. Up top. DeMille. Wisnowski's two goals today. 201 for his career. George Bond on him. That's a matchup you pay to see. DeMille. Lefty. Save Peters. Khan keeps it in bounds. And a new 60 for Maryland. And now this Princeton defense has to dig in. And the final minute and a half of quarter number three. Terps have led by as many as seven. Donville stepped down. Peters right there. 11 saves for the senior captain. Colorado native told me when he came to Princeton, he sat back in the goal. On the goal line, a deep set or has changed his style. He's a high arc goalie right now. And explain what high arc means. That means he's out further top of the crease to take away visual windows for the shooter, like a hockey goalie who, who comes off that line. What I witnessed yesterday in practice, Chris Islanian, who's a pro, PLL, whip snakes, giving him great reps from 10 and 12 yards, and, and you can see why Peters has had a, a stellar season. Mackesee, that one vetoed by McNaney. Quint, we saw you behind the cage, like, trying to make the saves too, right? I was on it. I, I was wish on we it. had video, Kark. <laughs> he was in his element, dancing and bobbing and weaving. David McDaniel's done. You know what they say about goalies. Sloppiness from Maryland again. Sides. 20 seconds to go in the third. Semi-final number two, Brown against Maycar. Slusher. No room to operate. Slusher shot, not much on it. Save McNaney. Maycar launches one on goal. There's Peters. 15 minutes to go. And we will have our championship game matchup set. John Tillman, 6-2 and two in the semifinals. Will his Terps get to the title game yet again, or can Princeton rally down five as we head to the final stanza in East Hartford? team that's been historically good this season 15 minutes away from a return trip to the national championship they lost by a goal in the final to virginia last year cornell the seven seed knocked off rutgers in decisive fashion earlier today if it's maryland cornell you can go back into the archives the 70s the great battles between mike french and eamon mcinaney and Frank Urso. Luke Weirman wins another faceoff for Maryland. Terps have won 12 out of 20. And the majority of the draws here in the second half. Weirman has elite stick skills for a Fogo. Kark, that's why it's so hard to come back on this team. You know, when you look at Weirman, he kind of negates any opportunities for runs. And I was just in the huddle with Princeton. Coach Madelon wants them to run. He said, now's the time to take the chances. But how do you take chances when you don't have the ball and you're staring at the best face-off man in America? Murphy feeding the crease. Peters canceled it at the cage. Pops loose. And in the crease, Owen Murphy. Peters is really explosive. He's been the backbone of this defense all season long. Talked to him yesterday about a GPS tracker he wears in practice and how he studies the data to analyze his quickness and his explosive movements. And he tied his hydration level. He's so bright, too. He tied his hydration level to his performance. Yeah. His senior thesis at Princeton about the reintroduction to wolves and how it affects deer population. 
I could use some wolves in my neighborhood. We got a lot of deer eating my garden. Bardaro against Alex Smith gives it up to English. English had a good look. Rondo is there. New 60. Tough angle. Think about last week, Clint. Maryland defensively. They took Connor Schellenberger and Matt Moore out of the game. They've done that for the most part today with Brown and Slusher. Ronda. That's Keppert. He's got a short stick now. Keppert playing with a shorty. Remember Roman Puglisi got hurt? Left the game in the first quarter. Maybe the top short stick in the country. Princeton looking for a third straight tally. A loose ball hold on Maryland. It goes back to Princeton. And a shot clock reset. And now this Terps defense has to dig in. Verdaro gets the pick. Brown. Trying to get to that left hand. Can't. Zapatello had it for a moment. It comes back. English chases it down. Still plenty of time to shoot. Mackesy running start. English working on Ray Hill. The Canadian pitches it back. Mackesy, the freshman. Left hand wide, shot clock at 11. It stays with Princeton. Mackesy, one of the highest scoring freshmen in school history. Only Michael Sowers, Kevin Lowe, and our colleague Ryan Boyle with more points in their first year. Rhonda, Smith on him, looking to feed English, and hits the ground, and there's Gepper. That's great defense. Great series for, by Maryland. They turn the man at the goal line extended, they send the double team, but they get the second slide behind it. So they collapse on the backside to the crease. There's nothing there. They seal up all opportunities. That was a long defensive possession as well. Terps need to be patient right now. Tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN, it is the women's championship game in all ACC affair, BC and North Carolina. Both needed dramatic comebacks, Kark, to win yesterday. Carolina was down seven goals with 10 minutes left. BC was down three goals midway through the fourth. And then they gave it to lacrosse's version of Michael Jordan. She goes by the name of Charlotte North. Charlotte North and BC going for a repeat tomorrow. Carolina has beaten BC twice this year. Maryland, meanwhile, up by five, 11.05 to go. to go fourth quarter a five goal lead for maryland quit we were talking about it in the break maryland today this is not their a game and still it's a five goal cushion here in the fourth quarter i mean john tillman will be honest after the game like this is kind of a b or b minus effort from the turfs and yet they're in the national semifinals winning by five they've had two scoreless streaks in this game one for all over seven minutes and they're currently on what a 12 minute drought 12 plus minutes since the last goal and I think Princeton has something to do with this B minus or B performance, whatever you want to rate them, guys, because they're playing really, really tough. They're challenging every single ground ball. From a physicality standpoint, they're not backing down. I said it earlier in the broadcast. I got a text from the head coach earlier in the week. And the message was simple. You can hold Maryland to 12 and still lose by five. 
Rodaro against Higgins. Now Rodaro from behind. Maryland playing the bulk of this contest without Roman Puglisi, who left the game in the first quarter. English. That one ricochets off the pipe. New 60 as Mackesy retreats. McNaney so still in net, no wasted movement. McNaney 16 out of 22 today. He's close to 70%, might even be above now for this NCAA tournament. Higgins, turbines to the ground, gets rid of it. Another chance for Maryland in transition. Maycar with a bouncer. This may be Princeton ball. No, they say Maryland ball. Maycar's wow. down and hurt. And Maycar is down. Slow to get up. Well, he's the other big time leader. Roman Puglisi is done for today. And now Maycar. Terry, one minute. Black 26, unnecessary. This was high one. and late. That's Kahal Roberts. Okay, so the one earlier was a three-minute non-releasable. And, and this, that's, and that's and this is just a minute. Courageous. And it's a minute. And Maycar comes down the back of his head. Watch it hit the turf. I, I think the, the danger here is not there, but it's right there. You hate to make a game of this magnitude about the officials. But for this crew, boy, it has been far from their finest hour. And now Maryland's... Staring at a Monday Memorial Day game with their unquestioned, potentially two leaders of the Terps, Roman Puglisi and Brett Maycar, have both been banged up in this game. He's the heartbeat of this team. We talk about the number one jersey at Maryland. I think for the first time, a defender next year should wear as Brett Maycar. That kid grew up in the same town as... I did, Yorktown, New York. There's no one who's more loved and respected amongst the town than Brett Maycar. He does everything right. He's as tough as they come, too. He's a different kind of leader. One of four brothers inspired by his oldest brother, Keith, who's autistic. We share that too, Anish. My son, Grayson, who's 14, is autistic. Takes a lot of patience to live with someone in your house that battles every single day. And that's been his inspiration. His brother, Keith, is his why. Every time he steps on the field, he knows how fortunate he is. And he's very open about that. So Maycar on the bench, Puglisi on the bench. Maryland has an extra man for a minute. They've got two EMO goals today. And both were slam dunks. Murphy's had the hot hand in the second half. Wisnowskis over to DeMeo. Wisnowskis, his sweet spot, top shot! Little penthouse palm! Variety. Multiple release points. Multiple options as a shooter. He's perfected them all, whether it's a three-quarter arm, a side arm. Earlier, we featured the bouncer. From the same range, the high heat this time. Look at the ball movement, and that's Logan Wisnowskis. He's not going to use the earth this time. And when you show the earth early in the game, you can go back to your patent. Plant lefty, sidearm high, heat. Career goal number 202, tying Jared Bernhardt, his old teammate, for fifth on the all-time list. Bernhardt, the Tawartown winner last Black year, now ball. in camp with the Atlanta Falcons. He put together 
quite a season last year, months after leading Maryland to the national championship game as the quarterback for Ferris State. He led Ferris State to a national championship in football. How fun and how cool was it to watch those games, watch his highlights, to see him dance around defenders, running the option, throwing touchdown pass. He was a touchdown machine. Maryland up by six. Their largest lead has been seven. Molliver, Atlanta product. Coached by the great late John Zilberti. Molliver lost his stick. Can't play without your stick. Princeton needs six goals in less than eight minutes against a Maryland team that gives up nine a game Patterson trying to get past Brennan it's punched backwards rolling slowly to a midfield bodies collide loose ball push on Maryland a shot clock reset for the Tigers in there for Maryland. McNaney, another save. A career high, 18. Quint, why is he so good today? I thought he got off to a good start. Made that first clean save. I, I think the big stage is nothing new for Logan. Zapatello, trail check by Billings. If you're looking for UCLA Duke softball, it will start on ESPNU right now at the bottom of the hour. Quint, you're trying to probe a weakness for this Maryland team. And, and we said today hasn't been their best game. Princeton and their play, a big reason why. But defensively, now without Puglisi, they've held their own against a very good offense. And at the end of the day, they've got a red-hot goalie in Logan McNaney. So you could be getting good shots. McNaney's at 76% of this tournament. You know, the one thing I, I think I would try against Maryland, if I were Cornell or Princeton, is more two-man games, more picks. When Ohio State took a 7-3 lead against Maryland this season with Jack Myers as their quarterback, they had him running off all sorts of picks at goal line extended and then doing inside action with Jackson Reed. There's a goal by Jamie Atkinson, the senior captain. 12-7. All shots are not created equal. The end result is a shot from dead center. Again, there's a pick. Maryland sends two to the ball. I'd like to see more picks set for the ball carrier. I think Logan McNaney quick hedged a little bit and thought that that shot would be across the body in terms of when you're going right-handed a lot of times you shoot across your body to the opposite corner you saw him hedging a little bit and he got beat near pipe At, you're exactly right Paul that that goal cam showed that you see him leaning a little to his right only you as an astute shooter would notice that left-handed right for Atkinson his previous three goals had all come in an April game against Marist. Fourth of the season, it's 12-7. Five minutes and 41 seconds away from Maryland. John Tillman took over in 2011. He's taken Maryland to six title games, closing in on number seven, and he would face his alma mater, Cornell, on Monday if Maryland holds on. John Tillman... A Cornell grad, started his collegiate career at Colgate as a goalie, ended up playing defensive midfield. 
But you look at the dominant side. He's a servant leader, okay? And, but he's got a clear-cut vision. There's nobody who grinds the details more than John Tillman. And see what they've been able to do this season in terms of a, an historic season. And if it is Maryland Cornell, the Terps all-time and past his prologue doesn't apply to Monday's game. But the Terps all-time 15-3 and three against the Big Red. However, all three losses have come in the postseason. The 71-76 and 76 championship game and the 2013 first-round game when Rob Pinnell had seven points. But John Tillman is, what, one in five? One in five. One in five on Memorial Day. And that really is the only black mark, Kark, on his record, on his ledger. But when you watch him and you know his attention to detail, he's got an opportunity for a second national title. And if I was to hedge the future, he'll retire with a lot more than two. They only lost one title game, in my estimation, where they would be favored. Uh, and often they've been saddled with playing in this second semifinal game, which, which is statistically and human life. If you, if you know sports, you know it's a disadvantage. So on that subject, Kark of Maryland holds. This time the second semifinal game will end a lot later than it normally does. Puglisi got hurt. Maycar took a spill. How does that impact the Terps on Monday? I think John Tillman continues to learn and tweak things. I bet you there's differences between the Sundays of the past when they were one and five and tomorrow. He's always evolving, John Tillman. Always. And if we're being fair, he's not that far away from having three titles. 2016, uh, Brian Balkan made one of the great saves in the history of the tournament on Connor Kelly. Last year, Luke Weirman shot at the end of regulation. Few inches one way or another as Wisnowskis missed the cage with two to shoot. That could have sent that game into overtime. What John Tillman is doing in men's lacrosse, to me, it's a little... The dominance is Nick Saban-like at Alabama. It's Kel Sanderson, the wrestling coach at Penn State. It's Coach K at Duke. Like, the sustained excellence that he's had in this last decade. I, I, didn't, spot on. I, I didn't think we'd see it as lacrosse grows and more teams have ramped up the program. It's reminiscent, Clark, of what Bill Tierney did in the 90s at Princeton. It is, but now we have professional lacrosse at a completely different level with the PLL. And who's produce, producing the most pros? Maryland. So it's the talent, right? It's the different kind of transcending type players. It's not just a system. Like, these players flourish in different environments. They're thinkers. They have a lacrosse IQ. They translate to the pro game as well, if not better than anyone. This has been a hard-hitting game. Wisnowskis just got rattled. You think about Tillman's evolution. Offsides, 30 seconds. Offsides on Maryland Princeton, was known seconds. before the shot clock era as a stalling team, a team that would hold the ball. Well, now we got a shot clock, and they're scoring zillions of goals. Transfer portal. John Tillman's been super aggressive in the transfer portal. It, those transfers have come to Maryland to play here today, to play on Memorial Day. Sounds a lot like Nick Saban, right? Saban used to run the ball. <laughs> now he's throwing it all over the yard, right? Saban has transfers from the transfer portals, like wide receivers, Jamison Williams, right? Guys like that, that plug holes and take your, your system to a completely different level. As you get older, a lot of coaches get stuck in certain ways. You get passed by when you do that. He's evolved. There's an old adage that applies to nature. Adapt, migrate, or perish. Keegan Khan, he was one of the most sought after transfers in the offseason. Three goals, two assists today in the national semifinal. 
Wisnowski's a hat trick today. Now, this is the drill we saw Maryland run at the beginning of practice right, yesterday. I, 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 I was just, I was amazed. Fundamentals and passing and catching every single day. Wisnowski's to Donville, shot blocked. New 60. And Princeton has it, 236 to go. Throw a hard pass, but make it catchable and put it right on the money. Seems like these Terps don't play with deep pockets. They don't play with a hook in their stick. They won today with defense and goaltending. Ronda's shot saved by McNeeny. Nineteen saves, a career high. The NCAA men's lacrosse coverage continues Monday with the championship game. It all starts at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Molliver, doorstep, off the pipe. And call the goal. We'll take another look. Did this hit goal come? Good call by the official. John Tilden probably thinking, hey, they owe me one of those anyway. Wisnowskis ricochets yeah. that off the goal. That's a goal cam. Good call by the official. 4 for Wisnowskis. The one they call Groot. We need a softer goal cam, don't we? They're making some subs, but Monday, a lot of tie-ins. Jonathan Donville, Maryland's elite midfielder, plays his old team, yeah. Cornell. John Tillman went to Cornell. Richie Moran, the legend who passed this year, went to Maryland. The tie-ins are endless. It's a rematch of the first championship game of the NCAA era. And because there was no championship in 2020, you're talking... At the 50th oh, Side line. Side line. championship game, 1971, Cornell 12, Maryland 6, Allen Rimmer scored six goals for the Big Red. 74, Cornell and Maryland met in the semifinals. Frank Urso and Mike French, Maryland won 19 to 10. 76, national championship. Cornell won by three in overtime. Different overtime rules. Cornell outscored Maryland 4-1 in OT. Mike French had seven goals in that game as Princeton gets a tally with Vardaro. And Quinn. Maryland on Monday will be playing for something else, a place in history. They got to focus on 60 minutes against Cornell. All right, guys. One and down. dealing with that Straight big red down, attack unit. I think the advantages for Maryland in that game, face-offs on paper could be dominated by the Turks. Jake Stevens has been quiet today. Maryland has emptied a lot of its bench. Save made by Drew Morris, who's taken over in goal. Quint, if you're a backup goalie, Maryland's the place to be. Morris has now played in 14 out of 17 games this season. That tells you the level of dominance by the Terps in 2022. Grad student from New Canaan, Connecticut. Terps survive a, a lengthy weather delay today with some logistical issues. Three hours and what, 41 minutes. They come to the stadium, got to go back to the hotel, have a second team meal. 
Princeton put up a fight. Credit to the Tigers on, on strong finish. The Maryland Terrapins will play for a national championship on Monday. They'll play for a place in history as one of the all-time great teams. It's Maryland, it's Cornell. The Memorial Day matchup is set. Kirk. Coach, I know you're a perfectionist. Where did Princeton test you the most? Um, I just thought they do a great job offensively of just sharing the ball, moving, and, and making us get stops. Um, they do a really good job with the one-on-one -on -one matchups. I thought they did a good job with that. I thought Logan bailed us out a little bit. Uh, defensively, they're super athletic, and they're awesome in the middle of the field. What is it about Logan that allows him to lead your defense? Um, I think he's got experience now. Uh, he's very calm, cool, and collected. Um, and he just never seems to get frazzled. You know, he always seems to be locked in in the moment. And something bad happens, he shakes it off. This team seems to be on a mission. Why? Um, I know what they all know what happened last year. Um, and, you know, they want to maybe see if this year they can win that game. But we got a great opponent, a really good team. So got a lot of work to do. Obviously, quicker turnaround for us um, than the other team, so we just got to have to deal with that and get ready for Monday quickly. What have you learned about that quick turnaround over the years? Uh, it's just hard. You know, big advantage to play first because you get back a little bit earlier, and I think every second matters when you're recovering. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Today's Capital One player of the game brought to you by Capital One is Logan McNaney. Stars everywhere for Maryland. A dozen All-Americans, including the junior goalie. Q, 19 saves today. You can do everything right against Maryland, and they still have the answer at the very end. The Minotaur at the end of the labyrinth. Babyface McDaniel, the lefty from Corning, New York, got off to a good start. He made that clean save early. He's so still and calm and rarely makes a bad guess. You know, he trusts his intuition. I think an underrated part of his game is his play around the crease with the rebound control, the ground balls, and the outlet passes. He rarely does he give up a turnover. And John Tillman referred to it in that interview with Clark. The kid doesn't let goals get to him. And he hits a reset button and comes back. And he's a winner. 34 and 1. That's pretty good. As a starting goal. 34 and 1. Unbelievable. The only loss came in the championship last year. A chance for redemption, not just for McNaney, but for this Maryland Terrapin team. They have been thinking about Memorial Day 2021 for an entire calendar year. They have been on a war path since this season began. One mission, to win a national championship. They get that chance Monday against the Big Red of Cornell. Maryland looks to make it an Ivy sweep on championship weekend. Cornell looks for the upset for the ages.